Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about another calculus concept. It is the derivative of inverse functions. So it actually is really helpful if you know that a function is the inverse of another function when it comes to evaluating derivatives. But before we get into that, what I'm going to do is do a brief overview of what an inverse function is and some key vocabulary that you'll need to know first. Okay. So here I have drawn a set of axes. I have my function f of x. I also drew the line y equals x. We'll get into why I did that later. Um, but first, let's go over what an inverse function is. So traditionally, you put some value x into your function and you get out some f of x. So you're, this is your set of all inputs. They go to some output. Now, for inverse functions, you're basically just swapping the two. So all of your outputs become your inputs, and all of your inputs become your outputs. So we're just switching the direction. So what that means is if I have some point, a comma b, and I know that point is on my function f of x. I'll even mark it here. Let's say that this is a, b on f of x. Then I know that the point b, a is going to be on my inverse of f of x. So basically, you're just swapping all of your points. Now, this ends up resulting in a curve that is reflected over the line y equals x. So if I want to sketch my inverse of f of x, I basically would just reflect it over the line um, y equals x. I'm trying to do that as best as I can. I know it's not perfect. Um, so I have the point right here, a, b. So then the point B, comma A, will be on my inverse function. Now the notation for the inverse of f of x is f with a little negative sign in the, um, in the exponent or the, sup uh, the superscript. Um, so f inverse of x. Okay, now a little vocabulary. Um, so when we have A, B, and B, A, these are called image points. And image points, all they are <laughs> is a reflection over the line y equals x. Um, and all we do is swap our input and our output. Okay, so the last thing I want to do, since this is more calculus geared, is talk a little bit about the slope of the tangent lines at image points um, when it comes to a function and its inverse. So let me just draw in, I'm going to try to draw it in as nicely as I can, an accurate, a relatively accurate tangent line here, and then one here. Okay, so if you notice, we have our two tangent lines, they're both still positive, but here's kind of a little fact when it comes to um, a function and its inverse. The slope of the tangent line at image points of a function and its inverse are basically just the reciprocal of one another. Now this makes sense because a slope, m, is the change in y over the change in x. And the slope of our tangent line of the um, inverse at that same point would just basically be the reciprocal of it. So the change in x over the change in y. So this is the slope of um, f of x, the tangent line at point a, b. Um, and then this guy right here would be the slope of the tangent line at the image point on f inverse of x. So now that we've reviewed these little facts, 
um, we're going to go and move into the calculus and how we can use this fact to help us evaluate uh, derivatives of inverse functions. Okay, so in the first part of the video, we talked about what an inverse function is. We talked about image points, and we also talked about the slope of the tangent line on image points in comparison with the original function and its inverse. So now let's get into the calculus of it. So we know from previous lessons that the slope of a tangent line on a specific point is the derivative of the function. So here we have if AB is on our point or is a point on F, then we know that the image point BA, just flipping that X and Y, is going to be on the inverse of F. And F prime inverse of B, okay, let's break this down a little bit. This is the derivative of the inverse of F evaluated at X equals B. In other words, this is the slope of the tangent line on the inverse of f at the point BA, okay? Which is equal to the reciprocal one over f prime of a. That's just the slope of the tangent line at x equals a. Okay, so that's looking at specific slopes at a specific point, and it's gonna give you a value for that slope. So let's, um, go a little bit backwards and um, let's talk about in general how this can work. So here I've kind of written it in a different form. I said if f and g are inverses, then the derivative of g of x, okay, g prime of x, is equal to basically the reciprocal 1 over f prime of g of x. Okay, let's break this one down as well. So g prime of x, this represents all possible slopes of any tangent lines along um, g of x, okay? And this is equal to the reciprocal of all possible slopes of f prime, or of f of, of g of x. So we're taking in all of the outputs of g and putting them into f. Okay, so now that we went over kind of how we can apply some of the properties of inverses of functions uh, when it comes to taking derivatives, let's do some examples. So then that way we can see this in action. Okay, so here we have an example where we can use what we've just learned about the derivatives of inverse functions. So as you can see, I wrote out our little rule that we went over right over here. So um, this is only true if f and g are um, inverse functions, right? So if f and g are inverse functions, then g prime of x is equal to 1 over f prime of g of x. Um, okay, so our example says let f and g be inverse functions such that, and I gave it some information. So f of negative 1 is equal to 1, f of 0 is 2, f of 1 is 5, f prime of negative 1 is 3 halves, f prime of 0 is 2, and f prime of 1 is 1 half. So we're going to try to evaluate each of these problems um, given that f and g are inverse functions and all of this information if possible. So some might not be possible. We might not have enough information and let's go um, over them. Let's see which one might not have enough information. Okay, so g prime of 1. So because we know that f and g are inverse functions, this is very useful information to us. In fact, the derivative of g evaluated at 1, because f and g are inverse functions, is equal to 1 over f prime of g of x. Um, so in this case, it would be f prime of g of 1. Okay, which is equal to 1 over f prime of, well, what is g of uh, 1? Well, we know that f and g are inverse functions. So g of 1, our inputs and outputs change. So what I need to look for is an output of 1, and it looks like we have 1. So if f of negative 1 is equal to 1, then g of 1 is going to be equal to negative 1. So then I have 1 over f 
prime of negative 1. Well, do we know f prime of negative 1? Um, and it looks like we do. We know that f prime of negative 1 is equal to 3 halves. So this is going to be 1 over 3 halves, which is equal to 2 thirds. I'm going to draw a little line here, so we're not blurring the two. Okay, let's do the next one. So g prime of 0. Once again, we can use that rule that we know f and g are inverses of one another. So g prime of 0 is going to be equal to 1 over um, f prime of um, g of 0. G of zero, well, do I have an output of zero that I'm given? Okay, well, this is kind of a trick question. We don't, right? We don't have an output. We have an input, but that's not gonna help me find G of zero. So for this one, there's actually not enough information. We need to know what um, input to put into f to get out a zero to really know what g of zero is, considering we don't really know much information about g of x um, besides that g is the inverse of f. Okay, so that one was not enough info. And then finally, let's do g prime of five. So this is equal to one over f prime of g of five, okay? Well, let's see, g of five, we're looking for an output of five, which we have. So remember our inputs and our outputs switch when we are dealing with inverse functions. So g of five would be equal to one. So then I have one over f prime of one. Do I know f prime of one? And it looks like I do. So that would be one over one half, which is equal to two. Okay, so you can see how it is extremely useful to be able to um, find the slope of a tangent line of an image point, right, <laughs> um, on inverse functions using these properties. Um, and you don't have to know every single point necessarily on um, your function g of x, and you don't need to know every derivative point if you have enough information about the original function. Okay, so that is it for today's video.